Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. All right, so in this video, I want to focus on lists. Lists are one of the most important concepts to Python programming. It's usually the easiest way to store data, and we're, we're going to see a couple of other alternatives that you can uh, that you can store data in. But lists are definitely the most popular version of, of any sort of container that you can actually put data inside of. Um, you can think of uh, a container. It's almost like you know, this variable is essentially a container that holds this value of cat. And this container of my variable, we know these are called variables, but you can think of them as just boxes and they contain a, you know, a set of data. It could, and this is a string, but it could also contain an integer or a number, um, and it contain other things. Now, a Python list, though, can contain multiple objects. So that's what it is. It's basically a bigger container that can, that can hold containers, strings, numbers, it doesn't matter. You, you can throw almost anything in it. And in order to make a list, we just have to create a variable name. We'll say my list equals. Now, keep in mind, you can't say list. This is a, a reserve keyword, so you can see it turns green here. So let me uh, zoom in here. So you definitely can't use a reserve keyword. We talked about that in the first video. If you guys haven't watched that, you might want to uh, skip over the, or skip back to that video. but. Um, anyway, that's what it is. It's these, these little square brackets, and, and in case you guys are looking for them, it should be above your enter keyword on um, the enter keyword towards the middle of your keyboard, and there's just an open and close bracket. Now, anything inside of these open and close brackets are actually what is contained inside the list. So if I were to assign values, I can do that. I can say apple, pear, orange so now this list called my list actually holds three strings but the, the flexibility of python which is really nice compared to other programming languages especially if you, you compare this to something like a list everything in, in python is essentially an object so uh, this works without having to do any additional work but you can just pass an actual number in another thing you can do is you could actually have an empty list inside of there which is a list with no value or it could just be another name so we could say another list equals this is another another list and then we can reference it here so the point I'm trying to make here is that Python lists are extremely flexible and they hold all kinds of data so this is just a simple string but we saw that we could make a bigger string and make, write an HTML file so you could have thousands of HTML files inside of a list if that's what you wanted to do now a few things that we want to mess with as far as with a list is um, we can do things like getting the length of a list by saying print and then saying len and then inside of parentheses we're going to say my list. So this is actually going to print the value, um, the, the, the numerical value of how many elements are inside of this list. Uh, so you can see that it prints out five and we say one, two, three, four, five. And you're going to be like, if you're keen or maybe some of you guys are going to point out like, I thought Python and computers start counting at zero and you are right, but they don't start counting at zero when you're trying to get something like the length of a list. So the value is five and there's five elements in there. That would be confusing if there were five elements and the value you got returned is four. Now what if I wanted to add something to my list? What I can do is I can say my list dot append. You can see even your editor tells you all about the append. And inside the parentheses, you just give, uh, we'll say, another fruit. And we'll get rid of the number and the, the variable here to clean this up a bit. All right, so there's list. And let's go ahead and, uh, and just print the actual my list to the command prompt. So we'll run this. And in the debug console down here, you're going to see that it actually has banana in there. So obviously, that's because we added it here. It wasn't. So you don't have to actually put all your values in the list when you declare it because then that wouldn't be very helpful. The reason why is like maybe you're scouring the web and you're looking for all the occurrences of like your favorite musician. And every time you see your favorite musician on a web page, you're going to insert into a, uh, a list of like your favorite websites or something like that you would insert the name of the website in here for every occurrence and obviously you wouldn't know about all those occurrences before you actually started running your programming and, and discovering that so it's important obviously that that list has the ability to add stuff to it um, another thing too 
is if you needed to, and you'll see this occasionally in programming languages, but you probably won't use it very often, but it is important that you actually uh, learn, learn how to use it. If you say mylist.pop, um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at this. So you'll see the pop keyboard used a lot. Um, well, not a lot maybe, but uh, you do see it actually in programming languages and stuff, but it grabs the actual last element. It pops it off the stack. So this follows a uh, LIFO, which stands for uh, last in, first out. So orange was the last in, and it's the first out. So that can be considered um, the, the LIFO stack. And a FIFO is first in, first out. So in many cases, you're popping off the top. You know, So if you have a stack of papers, and that's why they consider it a stack, you grab the, the top one off the stack. Now, a lot of people will say, what's the opposite of a stack? And I say a lot of people, a lot, I'm giving you a description of this actually. So you can think of LIFO, last and first out, as a stack of papers, and you're just grabbing the, the top paper off, and that's what POP is doing. Now, if you had a, a queue where you wanted like, okay, like, you know, typically you're waiting in line for something, you should be going ahead of the person that came in behind you, because that would be some bullshit, right? If you waited in a line and everybody that came in behind you got to go first. So that's not so you could think of that as a queue, and that is um, first in first out, which is FIFO. So if I wanted to do first in first out, then you can actually um, get that value as well. Now, in order to do that, it's actually a really weird situation. Like pop will grab the last element, but if you wanted to grab the first um, in, in JavaScript, there's something called unshift, which will grab the first element. In Python, though, you actually say pop zero, and zero is the index, and we'll get into that in just a moment, of the first element. So you're going to see that this will actually get Apple. And you're probably like, well, when I print the damn thing, I don't see Apple. I thought I grabbed Apple. You could assign this as your variable. We can say variable, or wait, we'll just say my, my fruit equals, and then we'll print my fruit. And that way you guys can actually see that it's it's pulling out apple now how do I get the last one you don't pass in zero I need to get in the habit of uh, hitting the refresh page there all right so you can see it grabs orange it grabs the last one so in Python though you typically don't see that you actually see um, first elements being grabbed via the index and an interesting thing about lists and actually with strings as well is that you can grab individual elements um, so if I wanted to grab Apple I would actually reference its index I would say uh, I'll just bring in my fruit again my fruit equals my list uh, my list and then inside square brackets I'm gonna say zero and that actually says get the zero index which is really the first value because remember computers start counting at zero so it's interesting that if you get the length of the list, it doesn't start counting at zero. But if you need to grab something in the list, you, you reference the first item by zero and start counting up from there. So this is going to return Apple. Now this is something that you will see fairly common. You're going to see this type of stuff all the time, and it's just getting a certain value. So if we run this, oh, I'm not printing it, damn it. Print my fruit. So you can see it grabs apple. Now what if I wanted to get pear, then you would just pass in one. And if you wanted to get orange, you would pass in two. So that is how you actually grab stuff in a list by index. Another interesting thing too is by using indexes, it also gives you the ability to uh, insert a certain piece of fruit at any part inside your list. So I could actually say uh, my list dot insert and then inside here the first argument to this method and this is actually a method and we'll talk about more of that later on but these methods are all part of the Python standard library. We're gonna say in the first in the um, actually we'll say in the first index so this is gonna be uh, at pair we're gonna say insert and then we'll say banana. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and print my list. And you can see banana got 
inserted there. So what if I said, you know, I want it to be between pear and orange, and you need to say at orange, because wherever you say the index should be, that's where it's going to be inserted in front of that. So there you go. So that's really interesting. But now you can be like, you know what, I'm going to say shrimp. I inserted shrimp there. Shrimp's not a fruit. So how do I remove shrimp? First, let's look and make sure that shrimp is there. You can see shrimp is there. So we'll say my list is here. So now I need to say my list dot remove, and then I can pass in the value of shrimp. So if I run this, uh, shrimp should not be inside of our list anymore. So that's how you actually remove an element from your list. Now, you guys might be like, well, that sucks. I can only add one element at a time. Like if I have a bunch of fruits, I don't want to just add, have to keep doing that statement over and over again. But what you can do is you can say my list.extend. And inside of extend, you could say banana, um, what's another fruit, strawberry, and tomato, even though a lot of people think it's a vegetable, it's a fruit. Um, so let's look at this. So now when we say my list.extend, we print my Oh, wait, now we have a problem here, one second. Uh, the reason why, guys, I'm sorry, this is a, is a function that you pass in a list to the function. My bad, that's uh, a stack trace, and this is always good every, every once in a while. I'm not gonna edit this mistake out because when you're programming, you're gonna make mistakes all the time, and being able to figure out what you did wrong is actually something that will take a long time when you're first getting started, but um, you'll get better at it and you'll be like, oh yeah, I clearly missed that. But there you go. So you can see that you can add a bunch of elements to your list by using extend and it's much easier than trying to insert things one at a time. So I think that's about where, actually, you know what, I'm going to focus on one more thing. This video is actually covering a lot with lists, but lists are like so important. Um, I want to focus on slices because slices are... Um, another powerful thing where I could say um, new list, this is the name of the variable, equals my list dot, and I'll say, um, and it's actually not the slice key, there's slices actually in, in other languages here, but if I wanted to say grab me the first two elements, I would actually say um, zero, or inside the square bracket, zero, and then separated by an actual colon, you would say where you want it to end, so we'll say two actually. Um, all right, so this should grab the first two elements, I believe, unless I'm looking at that wrong. We'll see. Let's let's print new list though down here. So we'll print new list. All right, so that'll grab the first two elements, as you can see. Um, so once again, it actually goes to the second element. So here's zero, one, two, but it says, oh, stop here, and it just grabs these two. So if I wanted it to stop here, you know, obviously you would say three. Now, one of the things, because I'm not in Python every single day, but I believe you can do negative indexes as well, and that should grab the last element. So you can see, yeah, tomato is grabbed. So if you wanted to go backwards, you could do that. In fact, you could even go backwards like this, negative two, and that's even, it's even crazier. So Python gives you so much freedom that you actually don't have in a lot of other programming languages. Uh, that didn't actually find anything, so I think that would be zero, two, yeah, that. Uh, let's try that. See, I don't normally do this, actually. It's not going to work. All right, never mind. Don't, don't do negative in indexes. But you can do, like, um, if you wanted to go, okay, I need to go from the, the first value. So I don't want apple because that's zero, and I'm going to go first. And if I wanted to go all the way to the end, then I can do negative zero, one, because that is obviously the last element. So... Don't try to do what I just showed you just a second ago because I thought you could actually do that, but you can't. But anyway, here is you're saying start at the first element, which is here, and end at the last element. So if you don't know how long or how big your list is, this is an easy way to say go all the way to the end of the list. Because the other way to get the end of the list we saw is we could say end of, of list equals my, um, I'm sorry, length of my list. So this returns actual number. So I could say I could pass in a variable, but why would I do all that? It's much easier just to have the negative 
one. But let's put a breakpoint here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Because obviously end of the list is going to get the value. So we have it's six. So this thing says all the way to the end of the list. And it's it goes six. And it grabs them all. So once again, no need to have to build a variable just to do that. Every variable you create in your program, if you can prevent it, it makes your program slightly faster, even though you're not going to notice it to the human eye. But um, it's just it's less memory that has to be set aside to do something that you could easily do through just some trickery like this. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up on uh, lists in Python. Make sure you subscribe, share this with all your friends. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.